बदले बदले से सरकार नजर आते हैं दैट इज द वन लाइन दैट सम्स अप द नॉट सो सडन चेंज ऑफ फ्लेवर इन इंडिया रिलेशनशिप विद पाकिस्तान मिठास नहीं आई है अभी तक पर कड़वापन थोड़ा डायल्यूट हो रहा है Look at what has happened. First, India opens up its airspace for Imran Khan to fly to Sri Lanka. Then, the two countries silence their guns at the border. Then, you have Pakistan's army chief, the most powerful man, turning philosophical and saying this: "Stable Indo-Pakistan relation is a key to unlock the untapped potential of South and Central Asia by ensuring connectivity between East and West Asia. The potential, however, has forever remained hostage to the disputes." and issues between two nuclear neighbors it is time to bury the past and move forward and now in the latest of the series of niceties prime minister modi has wished get well soon to imran khan who's down with covid now there are a number of reasons why we are seeing this softening of tone pakistan is out of cash and is reeling under heavy debt almost 87% of its gdp things are so bad that one of its best friends malaysia seized a boeing 777 from its national carrier that's the pia with passengers on board in kuala lumpur for not paying its leasing fee the fatf sword is still hanging on their heads and could very well cut them off from any further financial aid But a big nudge for peace with India has come from the UAE. The UAE has historic trade and diplomatic ties with both India and Pakistan. In the last few years, it has been playing an assertive role in the Middle East and its various conflicts there. In Asia, the UAE is trying to strengthen its political alliance beyond just its role as a trade and logistics hub. Its de facto ruler, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, shares a very strong relationship with Prime Minister Modi, who has called him his brother and conferred the highest civilian award of the UAE, the Order of Zayed, to the Prime Minister. In fact, when Wing Commander Abhinandan was in Pakistan's custody, one of the countries apart from the United States of America to pressurize Pakistan to release him was the UAE. A year before that, the Indian Coast Guard had launched a controversial commando operation to track down Dubai's princess Sheikha Latifa and return her to her father. As a return favor, the UAE refused to join the rest of the Islamic world in condemning India after the abrogation of Article 370 and said that it was India's internal matter. To cut a long story short, both India and Pakistan share a very good relationship with the UAE. Now reports are saying that in the last 6 months at least two secret meetings between India and Pakistan to try and arrive at a ceasefire at the LOC happened in the UAE, one in Dubai and the other in Abu Dhabi. At least in one meeting the NSA of India Ajit Doval was present. And there have been other clues as well. On 25th of February, when the DGMOs of both India and Pakistan announced the deal to respect the 2003 ceasefire, the UAE was amongst the first countries to welcome that move. A day later, UAE's top diplomat made a low-profile visit to Delhi. We didn't hear much of it. Then in November, External Affairs Minister S Jay Shankar met with the UAE royals, followed by Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi meeting them as well. Two weeks before the ceasefire announcement, the UAE foreign minister had dialed Imran Khan as well. The developments since February do point to a gradual thaw between India and Pakistan. Peace at the border was the first move. The next is restoring sporting ties. A Pakistani equestrian team was in India this week to participate in a championship. Pakistani cricketers are in line to get visas to travel to India for the T20 World Cup as well. Also on the cards, an army team. a army contingent participating in an sco anti terror exercise along with china and pakistan in pakistan next on the cards restoring envoys in delhi and islamabad who were recalled in 2019 after the abrogation of article 370 of course the next few steps will be far tougher restoring trade ties and then setting the stage for talks after 6 years Of course given our bitter history with Pakistan the question is can we really trust them every time Pakistan has talked peace they have walked war take for example Kargil Kargil happened after prime minister Vajpayee's very famous bus ride to Pakistan in 2001 president Musharraf came visiting he came to Agra posed with his wife in front of the Taj Mahal and then 6 months later India's parliament was attacked in 2008 the borders were opened for trade and a month later the mumbai attacks took place another example on december 25th 2015 prime minister modi paid a surprise visit to pakistan to wish nawaz sharif happy birthday 
within a week, the Pathan Court Air Base was attacked. So history shows us that Pakistan cannot be trusted. But given that we share a fence with them, do we really have a choice but to give peace a chance?